Cheers. Hello. <laughs> so let's start. <laughs> Hi, this is Bent and Daniel from PTV. And today we will give you an introduction into the latest status of the development of what we call the custom feature layer. Uh, let's start with <laughs> what we actually <laughs> target with this okay. webinar series. So okay. um, I think it's uh, an idea of yours yes. to yes. Uh, start a series of current development and our current development. Let me just focus to the slide so I can um, change it to the goals of this webinar series. That's so it. what did you intend? Well, my intention for, for this series of webinars is that from my perspective as a consultant within the X server scope, I have to deal with different parties who are using a specific software, which is called Map and Guide Road Editor. And they use it for um, some, some use cases such as blocking of roads if the standard data does not match their requirements. So this is a small group, but a very important group of stakeholders in the, in the context of XRoute, XTOUR. <clears throat> and what I would like to offer to those players is a closer connection to PTV's development status, because in the past it was like PTV develops something, takes months of time, and then there is a release. Surprising, surprise. <clears throat> and what I would like to achieve is to connect you closer to our reviews. Every three weeks we will we get a presentation from our developers uh, showing us the latest status and I just want to connect you to this status from the outside. Yeah, That's what I would like to offer. Yes, but usually our reviews are internally and also internal topics are discussed. Um, and to get you closer to the current state, um, we decided to have this in a special event like this webinar so we can just cherry pick what you are interested in. So uh, then yeah. the topic for today, you already mentioned it, is uh, the Road Editor 2, um, covering the Road Editor use case, which you currently cover with the Map and Guide installation, Map and Guide desktop installation, create, um, working with the Road Editor database, or at least uh, Road Editor layers, uh, which you can then use in Xroot 1. Um, the topic here is Road Editor squared or Road Editor 2 or uh, PDV Road attributes. That sounds like a feature layer and honestly that is a feature layer and uh, the name will be most certainly PDV Road attributes and the PDB road attributes um, describe just attributes um, yeah, of roads, uh, embraces which might you want to alter. <laughs> <laughs> so the, <clears throat> most generally speaking, um, I think we can rush over this slide. Yes, um, it's just the two of us, uh, you might already know. And so, Short again, uh, so why do we do what we do is uh, the first part, customers and stakeholders. Um, the second part is I just want to uh, jump right into a demo. And afterwards, after you have seen what you can do with it, I, can, uh, I will show you our intentions of the architecture and how you could use it either uh, the yeah either either or other way um, what uh, we um, what we uh, developed so what are the interfaces um, we're speaking about X server integration um, so what you um, should expect is an API or a few methods to interact <laughs> with and I want to close with further further steps, our next steps, um, because what you will see is the current state of development. It's uh, still a bit rough. And um, of course, we want to have it as a feature, as a product feature um, at one point. Oh, well, I, I, let me just add some comments. I have seen the current status some, some weeks ago in, in the review, and I was really 
very happy about even if it's just covering a subset of the final vision, it will now already satisfy some players' needs. That's fine. So let's just go further. Um, our customers, why do we do what we do? Um, of course, it's you, our ex-server customers and partners integrating solutions for yeah, mostly uh, special markets or customers with individual needs. With, um, and Road Editor takes part in places where you have not only special needs according to market, but also when you handle, for example, a certain vehicle type and you, from the regularity point of view, from the, um, you could use a certain road and you might want to block it anyway because you have the expert knowledge that you with your vehicle cannot pass a certain road or you don't want it for any other reason. Um, so it's the expert knowledge you you have or your customer have and you want to enable your customer or you want to be able to provide your customer with individual um, road uh, yeah, attributes and with that uh, we want to give you a possibility to do that by yourself and not yeah set up a project with pdv pdv uh, could generate a feature layer for you or for your customer and you have to change it and roll it out at least for every map version so in this thing uh, you can do it by yourself so that's you as x our customers but it's not only the x our customers it's only customers of other pdv product products like uh, pdv root optimizer st or map and guide or also our internal data services um, that's our the department providing additional data also um, creating uh, the feature layers for our standard products for stand standard content and so they could use it as well in their workflow and also uh, last but not least our upcoming PTV products, whatever that means. <laughs> so uh, yes, uh, PTV is a software company and we also have an upcoming product line um, which has certain requirements and that also plays into this topic or this topic also satisfy future requirements of PTV products. So now let's jump into the demo for that i will switch to my uh live system here so what i did i downloaded from our uh, build system a current snapshot from this morning deployed it on my local machine and that is what you um used to see that's a uh, yeah that's an X over two dashboard. And in this dashboard, there are a few showcases. And one of these showcases under the routing section will be a new one, like consider custom, fe consider custom feature layer. And I show you what we do in exactly this feature layer. Uh, not in this feature layer, in this showcase. And uh, let's just go out of Luxembourg because Luxembourg we know well, <laughs> very well. <laughs> so what do we want to do? Let's go somewhere here. Budapest is nice. <laughs> it's more than a thousand kilometers from nice to Budapest. <laughs> okay and um, what you could do here is you just select a segment by clicking on the map that's uh, the first feature that's a point selector so where, wherever you click on the map you you then select the, uh, the nearest 
the nearest segment uh, gets selected. You could also use a line like this, that, and so finish stroke out um, a segment. And so all intersecting segments get marked or get selected. Or you could also draw a polygon to a, cer a certain area like, like that. And then the resulting area, if I finish that, all the segments inside this area get selected. So you have already different selectors. And when you then um, take these select, uh, this selection, you can apply an attribu attribute. For the start, we um, implemented this attribute, this attribute alone, so you can block roads and you can block roads at uh, a certain direction, forward, backwards, or both directions. You know, or you might know, um, that the direction of the segments has not yeah, or uh, has not uh, is not is not really correlated to the driving direction. It's the uh, direction how the uh, how the segments are drawn or how the nodes are um, connected to the segments. So when you specify a direction, the forward direction um, may not be the driver's direction. Let's just um, look what happens here. So when I click on forward direction, you see here the south lane is against the driving direction. The north lane is with the driving direction. So this forward backwards is not really applicable for this kind of selection, but you can always put it to both. That's the street is completely blocked and mm -hmm. the little streets, streets uh, which are not um, separated, uh, so one lane per segment, um, then the direction both is, uh, it's blocked in both ways, of course. Okay, what you... can I ask just a simple question? You're now talking about the second feature. The first feature was the selection. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> let, let's uh, just okay. complete the use case because what you <clears throat> want is, you want to get your blocking uh, respected in a routing at least. So first step you, is you select, kind of select uh, your uh, roads and then you apply the blocking. That's the first feature in this, um, in this method we implemented. Um, and when you, uh, you could also, uh, you can specify direction for this blocking. You can also specify time domain. For example, you can put in 13 hours and then whatever. <clears throat> That's starting from 13 or 1 PM for four hours. All these segments are blocked every day. So that's a reoccurring blocking each day from 13 hours, four hours long. Um, this uh, time domain blocking follows a certain uh, structure and you can also have other reoccurring blockings like uh, a monthly reoccurring blockings. And um, the showcase is still pretty rough. So you have to select it in this uh, in, in this uh, style and this uh, structure, um, but uh, in a fully fleshed out editor, you would then have uh, maybe another look and feel and have something like a time and date selection or an interval selection to um, put this time domains accordingly. And then we apply this changes or we apply this a selection to a just go on. We, apply, we apply these attributes to the segments. Great. Hopefully they got applied 
and we then test this for routing. So let's get a bit out here. We blocked a few segments here and when we then try to route from here to, for example, there, I would assume the direct way is somewhere over one of those segments, which are all blocked right now. And you see already um, that there is a detour. Um, you, it makes if I uh, route ignoring the selection, you see the route goes straight through there. And if I take that into respect, the detour is taken. And um, I'm just in uh, during the time where it should be taken into respect. Let's see if the route changes. If I go into or outside the interval, <clears throat> doesn't seem so. But what I can do also do is that's. Um, yeah, what uh, you could describe as a test mode. So it tests the selection just for single calls. What you can also do is you can persist this selection with the changed attributes to a uh, to the uh, to the deployed or to the deployment system to the deployed X server, and therefore you give a label like this or another one like my blocks and deploy it. Fine, the, the, I got the feedback, I'm fine and it got deployed. Fine, so I have should have this now in my list of labels to consider. What did I do? I used my blocks. So when I then try to uh, consider my blocks, you see, then see there are blockings. And those here are not taken into respect right now because they also have a, um, a time dependency or time domain. What is active is this constant blocking here and there. That's the default setting. I did not deselect what I selected before. So, uh, and the default is a constant blocking with no time dependencies in both directions. And with this area, I speci uh, specified in detail what I want to have, which is the time dependent blocking. So the, the constant blocking is the reason why even after changing the time of the reference, it did not perform a toggle um, in, uh, and drive, drive over it. this. Um, mm -hmm. So now we went out of the time frame of this blocking, so it should go over there, but this blocking here is now uh, blocks it completely. Okay. If I <clears throat> just ignore it and root without any feature layers or custom blockings, it went over there. It uh, runs over there. So that's what we did. That's what we, uh, what is the state right now? So you can set blockings, what you might have seen. Let me go into the dialog there again in the, uh, in the, in the feature layer mode. And I go into the dialog here. <clears throat> you could also, open segments and you could also open segment segments which are blocked by default. Uh, that's actually a new feature that wasn't possible before because our uh, feature layers had the uh, mechanism or uh, the described behavior was um, when you stack feature layers on top of each other the most restrictive wins so a blocking always wins on top of every other feature layer. Now we have something like a hierarchy in which feature layers are respected and the custom feature layer has the highest hierarchy. And also when it opens a before block segment, 
according to the hierarchy, it is open for routing. So you can also open segments which are blocked by the base map or by other PDV provided feature layers. So that's it. That's the demo part. Let's jump back into the. So can, can I just summarize what we've seen? Or what? Of course. <clears throat> so you made uh, more or less three different kinds of action. First action was use the, the map interface of the showcase to select one or more segments, either because of crossing a line or because of being inside a polygon line. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, that was the selection mode. Then in the second step, you applied some changes of up attributes to these selected segments. At the moment, the implementation enables you to specify it is blocked or it is opened on a static mode, so without time dependency or if needed with some kind of a time dependency that follows the, the string that describes the time domain. Exactly. So what is not possible for now is apply, a, for example, a value dependent attribute like this is blocked only if your vehicle exceeds 20 tons of weight, for example. This is a topic for later, but for now we have just close or open mm -hmm. and time constraints, nothing more. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and in the third step, you applied, you, you, you enabled the routing engine to consider the data that we just changed. Yes, uh, in different modes. <clears throat> and let, let me go into the explanation right now. So what we did is exactly what you said. Uh, we selected um, an area or you have uh, different selection modes. If you look at this small, tiny screen on top, there's a rectangle. And what we got back is uh, with a get segments call, what we uh, need is a reference to the road or the segments we want to uh, set new attributes for. So we uh, selected a rectangle and then called the X server to reference IDs for the selections and we got the selection back. That's the uh, highlighted green little segments on, in this case here on top. And we also have other selectors like the stroke selector or the point selector. And we can call the X server with this different kinds of selection modes to get the um, um, a reference ID for the, uh, for the segments back. And in the next step, we then use this referenced IDs. That's the referenced uh, geo, uh, JSON objects to create a layer that's the same structure uh, or that's a feature layer point. And with this feature layer, uh, we can then perform, uh, we can then perform routings. And the first step, what uh, we had is um, the test mode, what I called. And what we did is we have a method create layer. And this create layer method has two options. The first option, what I try to demonstrate here, is a binary object. So what you get here is a binary representation of the feature layer. Um, as a call, um, yeah, as the response, um, in the response. So you have it locally. In memory, so to say, not, it, not in the data. You, you can store it in memory. You can, <clears throat> you can also persist it in a cl uh, client-side database. Um, you could compare it to an exception path, which, uh, which you got back in uh, X server one. It consists of the rule set you applied, on the segments you defined, and you have it on the client side. So you can then, in the next step, perform a root calculation, so with the start and the finish. You um, also um, uh, you also give the binary feature layer object uh, uh, with the call. And then the rule set gets also respected, taken into consideration. So you have routing calls with this binary object on client side, and it all 
uh, it just gets taken into respect for this routing when it applies. You can also set this uh, time considerations and when your timestamp of the routing um, uh, is inside the time frame, it gets taken into respect. If it's outside, it doesn't take into respect. But what you do with this binary feature layer object, you um, give the calculate root method this little rule set, um, which, uh, how it should behave within the call. And the you have a question. Yes, this this <clears throat> binary layer created in the intermediate section. Uh, how can I combine several segments with different attributes? Like some of these segments are blocked only during the day, others only during the night, and the third category is in a more static mode. Can I combine them in one binary object? Mm. Theoretically, yes, um, because that's a feature layer. It could have different uh, states, even different rule sets. Mm -hmm. um, from a practical point, point, I'm not quite sure how the detailed um, implementation is, because your, your request with create layer is you request a set of segment IDs with an attribute set. You can, uh, can have uh, inside this structure have different attribute sets referring to <clears throat> different sets of um, IDs. So I think the answer is yes. We can have a deeper look into the API um, later. But um, theoretically, yes. Practically, I'm not quite sure. Um, it could be that you uh, need to create several binary feature layer objects, which you then handle separately. Okay, from a, from a, the reason why I ask this question is because I, I uh, do compare what I see with what I know from the road editor. In the road editor, we have one database, we have different tables. These tables contain IDs of the segments, other tables contain periods of relevance, for example, and altogether this is matched, matched uh, at runtime <coughs> to determine the state of a segment. Yeah, so we, we may from, come to from, that. Okay, <laughs> okay, just impatient. Um, that's one part of the create layer uh, method. You can get this binary feature layer object. And let's uh, <clears throat> just have a comparison. So what you get back here is, you, have, you can have an immediate routing feedback for your call, just for your uh, routing call. It doesn't affect any other routings on the system uh, from any, any other clients. So uh, what you can do is you can test it from a single seed. And it, it's some, yeah, some, somehow comparable uh, with the X over one exception path uh -huh. mechanism. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Somehow, because the exception path is, as you know, a binary path representation, which you can also have a limited attribute set like prefer, avoid, um, like that. And you could have with this also segments, um, also uh, connected segments, which you then apply attributes to. Okay, there's one question in the chat. Does this also apply for X201? Nope. The answer is no, because even though X Server 1 supports feature layers, it will not be able to, to understand which feature layer is meant in, in the API. The, the routing selection perspective um, is not implemented in X Server 1, right? I don't get it. Uh, let, me, let me read the question again because I don't know if that's really the question. Just takes a few seconds for me to... Expand it. Manual blocking speed, vehicle profile dependent. <laughs> okay. Um, Man manual blockings uh, for uh, 
profile dependent um, attributes are in uh, in in the planning, like uh, physical mm -hmm. uh, physical restrictions, length, width, height, and uh, like that. Um, uh, that will come at some point. Um, it's uh, just one feature we chose um, as the common ground to get this uh, to get this functionality on the on the way. Um, the next part of the question is um, how the time dependent blockings will be respected in X to one. I that's a difficult question. Um, it's uh, not quite um i will answer this the other way around we will um uh, take care that this road editor um, 2 mechanism is fully supported in the x server 2 world so that's it for now um theoretically x over one the x over one is able to work with feature layers um, what we have to um, what we have to uh, look into if x01 is also able to uh, work with the rule set we defined and with the new feature layer theme we introduced um, there i have doubts that it uh, works out of the box but we have to investigate it further. And uh, second part is um, dependent on how the handling uh, or how we uh, integrate the further handling. It might not be so easy for X over one to address this rule sets inside the feature layers. And um, also X201 is three steps ahead because X201 um, depends on distant matrices. Dis distant matrices depend on the router and the router uh, then has to uh, take this feature layer into respect. So um, this functionality to take this uh, also custom blockings into respect is uh, that the distance matrix calculation in X root uh, in the X over one environment should be able to consider that. Um, and when the distance matrices um, are able to take that into respect, automatically X201 would have that. But the time dependency is a restriction XDEMA1 has. So XDEMA1 only supports one point in time. Also with the distance matrix creation uh, taken feature layers into respect. So you can have time dependent blockings um, inside there at one point in time, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> Can I just sum it up? Sum it up as a no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. From my perspective, the focus is clearly on Difficult. the X server too. If you want to work with your own attribute sets and so on, there are some outdated mechanisms available in X server 1, but yeah. the future is simply X server 2. If you want to work with all these completely new designed features like selecting segments, you are kind of selecting, you're not no longer using a desktop product from PTV, you can use an API, hopefully not the showcases. Yeah, but, hopefully not. <laughs> but that's, that's just a topic, how we will approach these use cases of more flexibility for users in the X server 2 world and later. So, um, yes. <clears throat> so uh, let's go further. Um, what we also have with this binary feature layer object, there are no rendering capabilities in server side. Um, what you might uh, got used to in the X server 2 environment is that we offer rendering uh, possibilities for almost every feature layer. And since this is a binary object, which you, um, uh, which, which you then uh, hand over with your request, it's not available for XMAP because it's not visible for XMAP. It's not persisted anywhere. So um, 
since this is a thing you have on the client side, you can of course render it on the client side. You have in this referred JSON objects, you have all everything you need for rendering it. And uh, when you compare it to our showcase, we, that's exactly what we did. We rendered uh, the objects we had on the client side. You just don't have the server side um, rendering capabilities uh, like the grayed out time dependent objects. That's what you get when you persist this as a feature layer, then also XMAP can access these feature mm -hmm. layers and um, apply the rendering mechanism uh, mechanisms uh, with a time dependency, with a uh, grayed out uh, uh, and, and this little watch icon in the corner. Okay. So what is, all, what is also one motivation for, for me for these kind of series of webinars is, uh, that you see what is possible, that you understand also some kind of dependencies and side effects like Daniel just described. Uh, one, one question about the, you compared it to the exception path with binary uh, path description of a route. That also means that the data, the IDs are map dependent, map version dependent. So I can apply it on the current 2020.1 map, for example, it will work fine with the 2020.1 mm -hmm. map in the routing. But if I want to apply the same data structure in a future map, I have to redo the process or? Uh, partially, mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, still, um, I didn't get into detail um, what you should persist on the client side when you uh, want to cover uh, this whole use case. Um, what you first have is your selection. Um, in my opinion, it's a good idea to store the unreferenced JSON objects. That's the, um, uh, the surrounding polygon yeah, okay. where you have, want to have the segments <laughs> inside or the um, stroke uh, you draw to strike out any segments. So when you store that and you uh, also store the attribute set you want to apply, you can then create the layer for any deployed system. Also, when you um, <clears throat> then did a map migration, you just create new layers for the current deployment. Okay. So it's an, it's a, uh, when you have that, it's a pretty easy migration. Okay. On the one hand, it's a bit more complex than in X server one or with map and guide desktop root road editor. On the other hand, it will be more precise because there was always some loss in, X, uh, in, in map and guide desktop uh, from one map version to the next version. That correctly. What you got is when you um, started a migration from one map to the other, there are always a series of uh, referencing errors which yeah. could not be matched to the new uh, database or so to the new map. Stable. Um, it's more stable since we store the uh, manufacturer IDs and not uh, in the, in the feature, uh, feature layer and in the past we had uh, geo references. So what we stored is the uh, referenced coordinates and we didn't keep the selectors. Uh -huh. And when you keep the selectors, uh, which you want to apply on your map, um, you're more safe. Okay, sure. Uh, that's just information uh, which got lost in the old system. Okay. So let's go further because we also have another uh, use case. That's the persisted data files. The use case is almost the same. You have a selection, you get your segments, um, referenced um, then you create your layer with the uh, attributes you want to apply and the difference here is you can then create the layer and persist it as a feature layer in your system that's the uh, lower uh, the lower uh, square and so then they got stored in the same way um, as the other feature layers. Um, you could compare it to live traffic feature layers, which are also shared in your deployment with all connected um, X servers in the shared file system. And 
they got persisted. And so if you perform a routing and apply them, then the routing is affected. <clears throat> and of course, you can have um, the same objects, the same IDs, the same uh, the same call, the exact same create layer call than before with your binary object, just switch the uh, the option that you don't want to have a binary object, um, you want to persist it. And that's the two-stage process of a road editor use case in which you first apply your changes, then you test it without persisting it in your system, and then when you are satisfied with your choice and uh, the routing behavior is as intended, then you persist it in the file system and after it got persisted, it then is um, <clears throat> ready for uh, usage also for other clients working on this system. Okay, next next comparison to, to Map and Guide Desktop's root editor, road editor. So in the road editor, we usually have, let's say, two, two roles on, on customer side. We have an administrator mm -hmm. who is responsible for the Map and Guide desktop installation, who got a notification about the blah blah street is blocked. Please put a blocking on it for 20 tons or more, something like this. He does the change of the data in the Map and Guide desktop. Through magic, this manipulated data reaches the other role, which is the routing user. Mm -hmm. So um, that means that also means that we have a data source, a, a database that contains the segment attributes and all these kind of uh, maintained data, which is maintained over months or even years. So mm -hmm. um, is this also possible to somehow load and my feature layer, perform some new small updates and then store them? Or will this be possible in the future, but not now? That's a very good question. <laughs> um, uh, the answer is from the X server side, no. But um, of course, um, if you want to have a, a road editor use case, you want to have an editor. You want to have a database uh, where your changes are stored in and you want to refer to a certain uh, or, or you want to pick up work where you left it the day before and the database will grow and you want to have a structure in which you uh, work in. But that's not the X server part. The X server part is just um, get the references right from your deployed system, from the selections, get um, create a feature layer um, from the combination segment IDs and attribute set. <clears throat> and when you uh, persist the feature layers in the system, then uh, consider it uh, with, the, with the routing. So all the X server functionalities, all these um, interfaces um, are provided by X server. What is not provided by the X server is the, uh, is the uh, data handling. Um, that's what the upper client means. Of course, PTV also wants to provide a solution for that. It's not just the scope of the X server. When you um, have a look at the um, at the client here, you also see there's a deploy functionality, yes. but not a load or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's so um, from the X server side is only push something on the X server, and then you see, oh, okay, at some point the X server gets flooded, and what about uh, what about uh, listing and deleting? Um, this X server, uh, the X server also has a, a home management functions uh, like list all the feature la deployed feature layers, like go so to administration, that there will be some, some new API methods. methods. Yeah, API methods uh, when you then filter by your tenant, your scope, also filter your labels. What I didn't mention, uh, 
in depth. Um, when you persist feature layers, you should label them. And the label is something like a scenario. Um, you could have uh, labels like uh, mountain pass roads, uh, which are blocked in winter time, or uh, they could be uh, just uh, frontiers you want uh, <laughs> remember whatever you promise right now is recorded <laughs> just go on <laughs> so so label them how you want to use it and how you want to find it in your system and then you can list it and also filter it by label and of course you can delete the whole scenario and deploy a new one from your database so you can all uh, we can at every time delete all deployed feature layers from the system filtered by labels so um, you don't discard your whole work you uh, but at a certain point in time you might delete a scenario you might to redeploy all your border uh, border crossings which you maintained by your own Uh, it is po uh, is it possible to delete single entries within a feature layer uh, that goes into uh, the vein that you always push to the X server what he should do um, so from the from the process point of view um, the user deletes something from the X server point of view. Um, fr from your database, you deselect certain IDs and you create a f new feature layer without this single entry and push the feature layer or deploy the feature layer on your system without it and the old one gets overwritten. So you don't also don't load the files from the X server. Um, it is expected to load the data or generate the data from the uh, from an outside system. Um, you can compare it to uh, um, to the live traffic feed, um, where you have a set of traffic incidents and only a part of it changes every time. So. There are a few new ones, and there are a few old ones, ones which got get deleted. But what you get is from our layer delivery system a whole new layer which has just a different state. Also, with most of the traffic incidents are just the same as in the two minutes before, as you got the uh, layer before. <clears throat> By the way, thank you very much for asking these questions because one other motivation, of course, is we want to not only give you information about what we think is important for you, we also want to understand how you would like to use the interfaces, what you expect from us, for example. And these kind of questions give us a very valuable feedback about the way you would like to integrate, let's say, the use case in, in, <coughs> in your own environment. For some of the players who are registered right now and who already asked questions in the chat today, uh, I already know your use case. I do know them, but not Daniel, yes? Uh, yeah, partially. <laughs> of course, we talked beforehand and in the meantime, and with some of you, I also had some contact in the past. And um, also, this develop, uh, development you see, or the state of development you see, um, is the product of all the gathered requirements and provide X server methods and functionality to cover your use cases. So that's the goal. So I'm not detached from your needs at all. Okay, that was not the message behind me. Sorry, <laughs> I hope it wasn't misunderstood. One, one question about in, at the beginning of the session, you said you just downloaded uh, the version, the, today's version from our build servers and so on. When will this showcase be available for the, those who listen right now for the, making their own experiments? I'll come to that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we can pretty much skip that. I think um, uh, we had a, a few times uh, how you can select segments and uh, what we provide. It's uh, rectangle is just 
a special polygon. I drew a polygon in the showcase. And that the, those are the selections we provide right now. Of course, on... Uh, but not only rectangle polygons, any kind of closed polygon. Any kind of closed polygon. <clears throat> it could also be um, the input geometry. The second line with the crossings can be a polygon which is not necessarily closed. It just takes all the intersections. <laughs> okay, we will come to back to you later, Volker, one to one. <laughs> and um, let's go to the next steps. Um, this answers hopefully uh, what you could expect in the near future. Uh, first of all, um, in the upcoming 2.15, um, this will be available to you. So that's the functions, the showcase. Um, yeah, the functions and the showcase in uh, ex uh, part of an experimental API. The 2.15 is planned for, yeah, a mid or a second uh, part, second half of November. So uh, the next weeks we're already working on the uh, 2.15. So you, what you did see mm -hmm. is kind of uh, 2.15 alpha. Um, it will be on premise at first. So this experimental API, we won't deploy it on X server internet. Uh, since we just do not know how uh, these deployment mechanisms behave in a cloud environment. We will test it internally, of course, but the uh, current state is that we, um, uh, that we just have it in the 2.15 release uh, for on-premise usage. So you can download it mm -hmm. from the custom area and play around with it. I already said it will be available in November, this year, November. <laughs> and what I plan is to have a stable API in early 2020. So the plans are that we consolidate what we have right now, um, the rest of this year, and also uh, work on on, on upcoming features. So uh, what is the plan is that we want to extend the, uh, the functions, not only to blockings, but also to um, speed values. So uh, you could set um, absolute and relative speed settings. And after that, the plan is not quite clear if we then proceed with avoid and uh, prefer mechanisms or with physical restrictions, but that's uh, not really that important. Uh, we might also um, have a bunch of those and release it at once. Um, the important part for me is to have the methods stable and uh, so you can uh, implement it and the features themselves um, that's only the yeah uh, internal handling uh, and how the router then handles it. <clears throat> okay, one one uh, information for some of the players who are just li are listening right now. Some of you are already dealing with X Server Two. Mm -hmm. Others are working with X Server One. Are working with Map and Guide Desktop. Have their road editor approaches and so on. If someone of you wants to test this new approach with the 2.15 in experimental stage somewhere in November, for example. Uh, get back to me. I will establish a, a way, uh, find a way how to provide the 2.15 version to you and give you maybe a little introduction. <clears throat> for those who have never dealt with X Server 2 so far, uh, one thing which is important is that you need, you don't need to use the xlocate special module module because for xlocate for tests you would also need some some additional data right yeah yeah which is standard data but quite it's a lot just, of data yeah it's uh it's quite a lot of data since it's address data and so we uh decided to separate it from the base map to, yeah. uh, <clears throat> 
but just get back to me if you want to test it mm -hmm. immediately. And this is also one one motivation. I want you to be closer in well in in gathering experience with uh, new developed features, even if they are in experimental stage. Um, yes, and what you have in the two uh, dot fifteen. That's also a reason why I showed you the showcase is exactly that showcase. You can play around with that and then see how the routing behaves and what you are able to do with that. And of course, I know, let's get back a few slides. Oh, let's get, uh, let's go, go, go into the uh, showcase. Uh, we talked a few times about data, persisting data, data handling, have, uh, and that the X server view is that we do, do not provide it. But PDV, of course, wants to provide some kind of editor. It's um, the point is it's not uh, oh, it's uh, the development of the editor with its own data handling is not quite as far that I can show you uh, that I can show it to you but that's also something we want to have um, and the goal is to have something um, yeah more fleshed out than uh, this little showcase uh, so have a web-based editor with an attached database which holds all the these important parts and you can then work with that apply those filters have your own scenario management and that will come at some point in time we are not uh, that is um, the only point is that's a bit behind uh, development uh, behind development uh, sounds uh, that we didn't uh, already planned it. Uh, actually, it's the case we first need the methods so we then can implement the end editor on top of that. And we just got the framework running and we will work on that. So it's not out of scope completely, it's uh, just not finished yet. Okay. One more comment about the three levels of features we discussed at the, in, in the middle of today's section. First feature was selection, second feature was creation of layer, and third uh, was including the layer in a, in a routing. Um, I assume that this included in a routing will also be available in Xtour or Xdema too? Um, yes. So, so what the feature layers you create here um, will be um, taken into respect in Xroot. Oh, oh. great. <laughs> um, in Xroot and the router means it will also be available for uh, distance matrix calculation and uh, the effect is that you can then also uh, apply it in, with, with this, yeah, with the current state uh, state of the art technology, also in X Tour Two, okay. so also in Tour Planning, but that's also a whole process to follow how to deploy sure. something. Sure. And then the next question would just be: Is there a there is a fourth level, which is the let's say, ask the server for yeah, what kind of layers are available? <clears throat> yes. Um, oops. Just have to. Connect Daniel to into power again. Uh, <clears throat> so this is just means there will also be some API methods where you can ask for what kind of custom feature layers are in the system. Yes. Yeah. Can you uh, just have a, a very simple glance at the documentation of one of those? Of course. New fantastic functions. Fantastic. <laughs> um, so uh, you know X server. You do have different services. API changes. Just look into what is new since 2.14 or? We could do that. Um, API changes. So when we have the experimental changes, that's the methods which are new. Uh, when you then go to, for example, X, where is X data? X data. If 
Schau mal, ob links noch klicken, weil ich es sehen muss. Genau. And so these are the new functions, properties. Right. You can just click on create feature layer, for example. Uh, list feature layer, uh, create feature layer, delete feature layer, the list feature layer. Um, also, where is the selector included? You can uh, list the feature layer and um, by also list it by labels. Let's, uh, let's get back. Um, that's <coughs> not a new change. All changes into 15. So it's, it's, it's quite easy. Those are new methods are available, just a few of them, very simple signatures. You can just ask for, give me a list of the existing custom feature layers. And <clears throat> this is what you can use to create, for example, a, a user interface where you can select or deselect which yeah. layers should be considered in the routing. Yeah, we already had a um, seg uh, get segments request um, mm since 2.9 to just have a simple um, function which uh, were, uh, was part of the uh, development and now we uh, new the new part is um, that you might filter the segments those i think do not apply but there will be filters like segment different segment options like network classes and other options uh, might follow here so you can have a selection and inside the uh, selection if you have a big polygon you can then filter the selection by different network properties segment properties like network class if you only want to block a high or a low network class or only want to block uh, different kinds of roads. Uh, in, in, the, in the review, I can remember, I just would like to repeat that question and answer. In the review, somebody asked for which segments will be affected when you use the polygon approach, only those that are completely inside the polygon or also those that are touching the border of the polygon. Okay. Just, just Give you a statement okay. about this. We, um, <clears throat> I showed you uh, different kinds of selection uh, selectors. Uh, we do have the seg um, segment by coordinate. That's the point selector. So it's the next segment. We do have the segment by intersecting uh, intersecting polygon. Um, that's all the segments which are intersected not the polygons which are inside that's the last one segments by surrounding polygon so the segments by surrounding polygon if you have a closed polygon it's all the segments inside not the ones which are crossed by the mm -hmm. uh, polygon when you want to have the ones which are crossed by the polygon as well just use the other method with the intersecting lines and then you have both so you can have a combination either all the ones inside the polygon or the ones crossed by the polygon or both if you want to have both okay for, for the next question i shall burn in hell probably but if to the audience if you have other approaches of how you wish to select segments for whatever reason maybe we did not think of it let us know we will if you if you really have other kinds of selections <clears throat> which are not covered here um, I would also be interested. Shit! So I will not show, will not burn in hell. I will go up not to really. Heaven. So if you, if you, none of my friends is there. Any, <laughs> that's all the. Uh, that's just the API calls. Of course, um, I can think of a few selectors, convenience sele selectors, which I might want to have in my editor. But the question is, can is there an API call needed, uh, which you can, uh, which you must have? But what I could, what I could imagine to cover is whatever convenient function. If, if I would like to, let's say, block all segments within a, a reach of thirty minutes, then I could just combine it with calculate reachable objects, uh, calculate reachable area. area, get the polygon, and then apply the polygon to the selectors 
statements and uh, identify those objects like this. Yeah. Or if I want to block all the segments in postcode area 76131, for example, then I would have to use the standard geometries of the zip code areas, for example, and then I can use the existing selectors. Uh, maybe you need to transform the polygon to the format you need, but yes. Okay. As I said, if you have other approaches that you would recommend to be implemented, just let us know. Okay, just go on, please. Daniel? Uh, 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 we are we're qu uh, pretty much done. What you have seen is the create list delete feature layer and the um, get segment part. And then you're pretty much covered. So you have the get segment, uh, by coordinate, by intersection, by surrounding polygons. So all your selection is done. When your selection is done, um, huh, you need your attribute set and apply it to the segments. Um, maybe you want to have, for that, you want to have a deeper look into the, that's the stable types. Let's get to X data, create feature layer. What do what you want to have is the create feature layer and what you need here is a yeah, the theme ID uh, that will be PDV. What? Okay, we need to adjust the um, name here. That's pretty uh, the theme ID of uh, that feature layer will be PDV road attributes you need a user defined label that's how you address your uh, scenario then the features you want to that's the attributes um, uh, a set of metadata and the result fields that specifies if you want to have it um, as a binary object or if you want to have it persistent I mean, you. Don't, let's not go too much into concrete implementation details. Today but here it's are the more features. about what is possible <laughs> and what you can show and <clears throat> anything like uh, complete training of how these APIs is now built and so on. That's a bit too much for today. What you okay. can see is right now what is possible that you can tell others in your company, team leaders, product management, whatever, about, okay, I have seen the future. This is how it will work. This is how they approach our requirement. Yeah. <clears throat> ah, one very good question. Uh, comes from an existing Rollinator user, power user, by the way, uh, <clears throat> who is familiar with Map and Guide Desktop, who already implemented his own visualization layer by <laughs> extracting the Rollinator database. Uh, by the way, and who wants to know how can I migrate my map and guide desktops, road editor data from the X Server 1 universe into X Server 2 feature layers? This database has grown over years. And th that's a pretty good question. <laughs> um, pretty good challenge. <laughs> for that, um, for power users, and I also have a few in mind. Um, the how the uh, yeah how the uh, how how they applied the road editor process is in most cases unique, and which block uh, uh, yeah which attributes they need the most, and how to convert it, and also apply. Uh, may be needed metadata, metadata to that. Um, I, yeah, in my opinion, that would be part of a, yeah, a, a workshop or it, I think it, uh, the, there won't be a tool which just, um, which just uh, takes the database and creates feature layers because, uh, you you could do that it just won't help um yeah that's a one-time solution what you need to have is to convert your existing um, road editor database in the database structure you uh, will have in the future and the database structure is not 
there, there's not a PTV uh, specification how the database, the target database should look like. It's just specified what the create method needs. And so you need all the information and you uh, need to have all in place. And uh, I already mentioned some information which you want to have in future is not contained in the road editor database. So uh, there also needs to be a strategy uh, either how to fill, fill that up or how to work with it in the, in the future. I, I would say that the, the question behind that is that somebody has grown a large database with thousands of segments, mm -hmm. and individual, mostly blockings, some of them time dependent blockings. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, that question is, is simply how can I ensure and reduce my efforts in migrating these expensive information, which has grown over years, yeah. to the future architecture. It's a different thing to handle those players who are dealing with attributes that have never been part of Road Editor 1 because they have nothing to migrate. Yeah, so exactly. they will just have to understand what the feature in the future is. But for those who already are using the Road Editor from then in the X Server 1 world, for them we have to identify a migration path. That's a very good question. And whether it's a command line tool or some other strategies, that's something we have to define together. In some cases, mm -hmm. um, also a simple um, uh, a simple database conversion could already do it if you then have an integration uh, which uh, covers the your use case in the X over two world. Um, in some cases, that's really sufficient. And maybe you. Uh, if if somebody I know I know this guy pretty much. <laughs> uh, if he has a database table where the only thing he does is complete blockings, not time dependency, just blockings. That means there is a table in the road editor database that contains the attribute, the, the segment IDs. Mm -hmm. So you can just read the segment IDs and call his X server 2 APIs with to apply blockings, no time dependency on the following IDs. Isn't that everything he has to do once? I on the same map version. So yes, I, I know what you are saying. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> uh, um, that's the reason uh, why we are we are talking now yeah. because you can simply try it out. You can try out if that's an approach which works. If you can maybe still use the existing road editor database, <clears throat> extend some tables to have additional information for the future, and use the uh, database with the contained data. And if it works, and make it open source. <laughs> it works. Um, I have an idea for, for a future selector, thinking of, uh, of consisting road editor databases uh, where you have polygons, but not the polygons surrounding something, but which are root paths. So you have already um, segments, which you might um, me transfer to project, yeah. that's that's something you might want to have uh, <clears throat> when you have a root or a different set of segment polygons and you want to apply uh, an attribute or you want to apply attributes on the segment uh, a list of segment line strings polygons so that's not an intersection but the, or but, the, but the intersecting is it just a single one to one point connection or no it, it can be a design? whole polygon where's the difference then uh, intersecting needs really to intersect if you have uh, the intersecting polygon mm -hmm. shifted to the actual root it might not cross the root anywhere what you want to have then is like a matching mechanism <laughs> somehow <laughs> why did the segment cross the and so when you when you have a polygon maybe from as a gps track and you want to apply a attributes to that you might want to have <clears throat> referenced by Polygon. Okay, okay. So as a 
you need, you know. Okay. Well, let's just go on. Any any further questions from the audience? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I mean, you can come back to me in person. <laughs> band.welter at ptvgroup.com. Um, <clears throat> if you have further questions, um, probably I will just get back to all registered parties for this webinar series with 2.15 is now available. If you want a trial version, get in touch with me, for example. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> now, today we had more than 20 registered parties. That's more than I expected. Uh, but I'm quite happy about this. Shows that there is a, uh, an important level of interest. Um, and I will also share some information about this topic in the special Exurber forum that deals with the Rodidiser successor architecture. Yes, and uh, maybe we can also get in touch in the near future, maybe uh, at a PTV event or something like that. Yeah, for those of you who are visiting us in two weeks when we have the partner days here in the headquarter, just ask us for another demonstration if needed yeah. or discuss with us. Oh, yeah. yeah. I also <clears throat> plan to have a brief uh, look into the showcase um, at this venue. Um, now, uh, in this webinar, we are, uh, went more in depth. Um, maybe one to one, you, uh, we can clarify a few uh, questions. But um, yeah, just keep in mind that's the current state of development, and uh, there will be more. And feedback is always welcome. Yes, and in the past, and not only about the implementation of these functions, but also about these kind of webinars. I mean, it's the first time we have been very. Ausführlich, uh, very detailed today, and we had fun, of course. Um, whether you would like to participate in these kind of webinars in the future as well, or whether it's just better to wait for the releases of, of these features or not, it's it's up to you. We need your feedback. This is our fuel. This will drive us uh, in the in the next months to provide same kind of information in future webinars. You can use the same registration uh, link. For, for future webinars, and I will just send the, 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 the new schedules whenever we decided to make another webinar for this context. Or, or yeah, with, with, uh, with whatever topic, maybe we uh, change to another topic you might be interested in. That's it so far? Yes. If there's no more. No, I don't see any more questions. <clears throat> Okay. So then it was a great pleasure for me. Thank you, Daniel, for the preparations. For me, it was quite simple. If you have further questions, get back to us through one of these email addresses or other channels like the forum, or also we will also provide information on the developer blog. And once the, well, what does it mean for 2.15 is deployed on the, on the test environment that is mentioned here on the, uh, those methods um, are, disabled. They are disabled. So you need an on-premise version yeah. to test this. Okay, good to know. Okay, so thank you very much and see you again in a few weeks then, hopefully, or one or two months. Who knows? Yep. Okay, see you. See ya. Bye. Bye.